I fell in love and learned racquetball when I was at the University of Vermont. I never planned on a career in racquetball, but after I graduated, the fourth ranked player at the time, Jerry Halisher, saw me playing in a tournament and um, he said I should take the game up seriously, said I had potential. So I did. I studied the game and learned about physical aspects and the mental aspects. It was not into the World Championships in 1984 when I learned about the most important aspect, and that was the state of my spirit. I qualified for the U.S. team by placing third in the Nationals behind Marcy Drexler and Sidney Baxter, and they both beat me again in practice prior to the World Championships, so I was third on the team. When the tournament began, my spirits were high, being with players from around the world who love the sport as much as I did, and for the first time, playing for my country, not just myself. I was also fortunate to be hosted by a family who showered me with hospitality and took me for walks in their garden full of fruit trees, which connected me with the beauty of nature and the beauty of their loving hospitality. All these events filled my spirits with what I call all that is good. It was this combination of calmness, high spirits, and appreciation that catapulted me into playing a new level with improved focus, kind of like when you've not been able to play for a while and the first time back, you're full of excitement, appreciations, and no expectations. You seem to play at a higher level, making all your shots. Right? So, it was this similar feeling, our zone. I won five matches, including defeating the two players from our country who I'd never beaten before to win the most important tournament of my life, the World Championships. It was the most important tournament, not from the ego trip of number one, but for the education that my positive, emotional, spiritual connection was the key to finding my best game and my best self. Knowing I played at a level higher than normal, beating players who had just beaten me, and loving that emotional state. Don't do it. I vowed to myself that from this point on, my main goal would be to find that same zone to play out of, no longer using the ego motivation of winning tournaments, but the motivation to connect with that wonderful feeling of a connection to all that is good. I wanted to experience that high of being in the zone as my goal and my reward, knowing that in that place I would be my best self and at my highest level. Sounds easy? It is not. I found out, and I'm still finding out, there are an amazing number of negative feelings that seem to creep in and take over without even conscious thought. For instance, I remember the challenge of the challenge to get over the negative feeling of the pressure to prove that it wasn't a fluke that I won the world championships. I have also felt that negative presence of overconfidence when I play a player that I've already, already beaten in the past, until of course they beat me. Then I feel the fear of, until of course they're starting to beat me, then I feel that fear of failure. There is also the prevalent negative emotion of feeling the victim. The ref is against me. The ref lost it for me or the other players cheating. Focusing or playing out of any negative emotion, not surprisingly, affected my play and my spirits negatively, blocking me from the connection to all that is good. So what did I do? The first step is prevention. It means that I check to make sure there is no negative emotion that I can sense, and if there is, I acknowledge it, but let it be, and then I change the focus. I refocus on holding on to things that heighten my spirits, like an uplifting song, the wonderful feeling of making a great shot, that heart-filling feeling of beauty of the natural world. I try to keep a positive emotion in me as I play, connecting with any emotion that connects me with that flow of all that is good. It's all I need to hold on to, and that's I know I will play my best. So is that all I do? No, I work on the physical and the mental game too, but my emotional state comes first. I first make sure my spirit is in the state of positive energy, and out of that zone, I work on the physical and the mental strategies. Interestingly, in 1988, I decided to use what I learned in racquetball to help me be my best to go through PT school. So during those three years, despite the many stresses and countless challenges, I made my spirits stay positive. I made sure that my <coughs> spirits stay positive. I ended up graduating with highest honor and the graduation speaker. Whereas previous to this, I was just a B student. So it's huge that I found out this positive emotional stuff works in real life too. <coughs> How do I know it works? Years of positive results. In the last Hope for a Cure tournament in Atlanta, Georgia, 
2019, I was 64. And I had to play seven other top open players. Remember, Joy? Uh, players of rising <coughs> ages, 18 and up. Not only from our region, but from Florida and Seattle, Washington as well. I defeated every player to 15, including four players, 15 to 14. Do you think that this 64-year-old was physically or mentally that much better than these top players? I know I was not. It was just 100% because of my focus. And if anybody saw me in this, as a 66-year-old playing against Megan Shelton in the finals of the 2022 tournament at UNC, you would have seen one player who is younger, stronger, quicker, hitting great shots, and somehow uh, she lost an older, weaker, slower player. It was about the zone I was in. What happens when it's not working? Like a player is killing me, and my positive energy seem not to be working. Do I change focus? No, just because I'm losing does not mean it is not working. It means the other player is on focus and physically playing better. I stay calm because I choose not to go into fear or fight or flight worry mode where I cannot think. I keep my focus and allow inspirations to come in on how I can change things around. Like mix up the serves, pass more, pinch more. I just stay in the positive spirit mode and I may lose, but I learn from it. I enjoy the experience and from the education I gain, I become a better player the next time. And when I stay positive state, I'm playing my best for that moment. How can I expect more than that? And when I'm in the zone, I'm just so grateful to be connected to all that is good because it's such an awesome feeling. And I know I'm playing my best this time. So winning is not on my mind. I'm just enjoying the present moment of that wonderful feeling of playing my best. <laughs> Sorry, playing my best. Why am I sharing this with you? None of us know how much longer we're gonna play. And I wanted this opportunity to share my life's work in the hope that others may benefit from it. Imagine if we had tournaments full of players playing out of their highest selves. There would be respect to the refs, to the tournament directors and opponents. There would be an atmosphere of fun and positive growth, drawing more players in. I love racquetball because it has taught me so much about myself and I have found my best self through playing. I hope others have had this experience or will have this experience. Thank you again for this great honor. It means, just a second. <laughs> I don't know if I can finish this. It means more than you can know. So, thank you.